in approximately eight weeks. Athletes from around the world will be meeting in Beijing for the Winter Olympics. Should Canada be there? Let's ask David Mulroney, the former Canadian ambassador to China. There's some controversy about this. Uh, the United States is toying with whether it should be a diplomatic boycott. In other words, send athletes, but no money and no other officials. Uh, Canada said some time ago, well, we're going to let the athletes decide. Uh, so it's a complete abrogation of uh, government responsibility. Let the athletes decide what our foreign policy is. I guess the main argument is that if everybody goes and says nothing is wrong with China, it gives the present dictator a huge boost up. See, the world agrees with me. That's absolutely right. And it's more, the, 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 um, China hosted the Olympics in, in 2008 after repression in Tibet yes. and largely got away with it. And, and they dazzle everybody with the fireworks in the stadiums. The danger now is, and, and the horrible thing now is, that they're conducting a genocide as we speak. Things have and changed so, since 2008. Things have, things have changed. And what China will assess from this is, if we can do this genocide in our far west and the world still comes and all the major advertisers come, we can get away with anything. Uh, there's a little, there's a story that's gaining coverage now, and it has to do with the disappearance of a Chinese tennis star yes. called Peng Shuai. She, she made alleged, an accusation. she made an accusation that a, a senior member of the of the Chinese government had had molested her sexually, yep. and suddenly she disappeared, and she seems to have uh, issued a retraction on Twitter, but she no one can find her. People and, say it's fake. And, and if China is willing to do this to an athlete in advance of the Olympics, as it's conducting its genocide, as it's squeezing any remnant of democracy out of Hong Kong, as it's you know, even more aggressive in the South China Sea, it just doesn't care. It thinks it can get away with it, and guess what? It is getting away with it. Because any time you put a modifier in front of boycott, like diplomatic boycott, you don't have a boycott. If we don't send our sports minister, do you think it's going to send the Chinese into despair? They won't even notice. Right. But if we send all our athletes, then they just think this is terrific. Now, two questions quickly. Genocide. Some people are going to say, well, what genocide? Has it been proven? Yeah, there's all kinds of evidence. That, uh, more than a million Uyghurs have been incarcerated. There's satellite evidence. There's the evidence of Chinese paperwork itself that has been leaked. And there's the evidence of Uyghurs whose family members are now disappeared. So it's a broad, technologically sophisticated genocide. Is there a comparison to... China hosting the Olympics and this genocide going on and the authoritarianism of the Chinese society and Hitler in 1936 hosting the Olympics, the world all went and of course three years later it blew up. I always like to set Hitler aside because it, of the enormity of what he did. Yes. And, but yes, there is a link to attending these games. Hitler used his games in the 30s to gain international legitimacy and to dazzle the world. It was another way of saying, we're rising, we're powerful. That's exactly what China's doing. Three minutes. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting. Thank you for subscribing. Independent thought, that's what we need. So some people say, though, three minutes is just perfect. I can sit on the toilet in the morning. I like it. However, others say, I'm busy to sit and watch. For that, we now have the podcast. So wherever you subscribe to podcasts, you can go through and just go to the podcast, Canadian Politics. There it is. The LeDrew, three minutes. You don't have to watch me. You can just hear me and hear the guests.